Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. The first comment that I'm going to look at comes from someone that you may be familiar with. This, friends and neighbors, is the self-proclaimed teacher over at the Syntax Learning Center, also known as the Quantum Community, also formerly known as the Red Thumb Club, etc., etc., Joey John Lester, the son of the Novolution, i.e. Revolution. The same Joey John Lester that Sergeant Robert Horton contacted me about years ago wanting me to audit Joey's uh, teaching program, which I didn't do, by the way. So, as I said in my community section, and I'll say it again here, Joey must have reached into Russell J. Gould's purse and got his cojones out of that purse and perhaps created a new YouTube account and decided to have the guts to post a comment on my channel here, which kudos to him. And the comment says, for the facts of the facts are with the truthful closer, truthful closer, C-L-O-S-E-R, yes, closer, of a podcaster with a void PSYOPs paycheck by the podcaster Tor. I think a Tor is a, a big chunk of rock, isn't it? Pretty sure that's what a Tor is. Um, so let's look at that sentence backwards. For the podcaster and Tor of a void PSYOPs paycheck is with a podcaster of the truthful closer facts by the facts. So that comment makes absolutely no sense to me. Although the positional sequencing is correct, I don't know what Joey's trying to say here. So this is the comment that I offered back to him. I said, hello there. I can help you clean up your correct sentence structure because as it stands, your sentence is muddy and nonsensical at best. The positional sequencing is correct, but the rest of it borders on gibberish. I don't know what a truthful closer is, or a void psyops paycheck, or a tour. Could you please share your correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, finite means for those words, if you have your own dictionary, that is. Do you mean closer as in getting closer to the truth? You may contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com if you'd like to apply for a workshop. Kudos for your valiant effort. Stick with it, and you may actually go uh, get beyond newbie level. Now you may ask, Jason, why are you behaving in such a way towards this individual, Joey John Lester? And my answer is this. Joey John Lester has slandered me multiple times in the public. 
basically saying nasty things about me. And so that's why I'm behaving the way I am. This is rule one, rule equal. Right? What you get is what you put into it. And this is what he puts into it. So looking at it from an objective perspective, I wonder what his volition is in coming here and choosing to comment on my channel. I did publish this comment, by the way. Um, however, the times that I have commented on their channel or on Winifred Adams' channel, they never publish my comments. They delete them right off the bat. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I'm blocked. And to be fair, I did block Joey's other account, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so either something happened and he got unblocked or he created a new account to post this quantum gobbledygook. So here's the thing. I know that he's just sort of spreading his rhetoric, his narrative about me to my viewers, thinking that, well, maybe he can turn some people away. I don't know. But really, if you can't understand what someone's saying, then there's no communication taking place, and there's a ton of assumption built into what someone is communicating. And that's the case here, because if you break it down for the facts, the facts are the cause of the sentence. What are the facts concerned with? Oh, the facts. There is no situation, no correct sentence structure that would ever be structured like that other than a learning example, such as the example that David Wynn Miller used to give and one that I also give when detailing the positional sequencing for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. That's the only time you would do that. The word facts would probably only be used one time in a sentence. Maybe two at best. But this guy, the cause of his sentence are the facts. They're concerned with the facts. Plural verb are. What is possessing the facts? The truthful closer. Don't know what a truthful closer is. What's the truthful closer concerned with? A podcaster. So the podcaster is giving whatever truthful closer is. What's possessing the podcaster? A void psyops paycheck. What is a void psyops paycheck? I'm not sure what that means. And who is the authority of the void psyops paycheck? Oh, the podcaster and the tour, you know, the, the big chunk of rock. So as you can see, it makes absolutely positively no sense at all. And that is your Syntax Learning Center Grammar Tutor. So, best of luck, Joey. Next comment comes from Jeff Lewis GP, and they say, Greetings, Jason. Keep up the awesome work. Please reach out if and when ready to talk plainly. On another note, I thought you said you felt he was not dead in one of the live streams you did recently that I also commented on. This sounds vaguely familiar to me. I feel like I've already addressed that comment somewhere. Uh, but I'll address it here again, even if I did. Uh, thank you for the kind words. Keep up the awesome work. Please reach out if and when ready to talk plainly. I talk plainly all the time. And I'm not sure why I'd be reaching out to you, Jeff Louise. Did you offer me something? Is there a reason why I would contact you? Uh, because the only thing that's going on on this channel is me offering to teach grammar. And if you want to contact me about that, that's up to you. But I see no reason why I would ever reach out to you. Usually that's the way contract works. Someone has something. Someone else wants that something, so then the someone who wants something would then contact the person who has it. And as of it stands, you really have nothing that I can see that I would want. And I'm not being, like, I'm not picking on you or anything, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm saying that's the way contract works. I don't see, logically it doesn't make sense why I'd reach out to you. But I do ple uh, speak plainly all the time. I thought you said he felt he was not dead. Oh, yeah, then I asked him for a timestamp in a video, and then he said, of course, well, I don't have time to look for that or whatever. And so it was never resolved. He never responded back. But I never said that. 
never, ever, not one time ever in a video did I ever say that I thought that David Wynn Miller was not deceased. And then Mark Edwards says, One was told by a wise man long back, Believe nothing you hear in half of what you see. And I guess my kuleana to that is, what one was told that, and who is the wise man, and what constitutes a wise man? Belief is no contract. If you parse it, it means no love. Uh, so what I, how I participate with facts, there are things that I can certify. I highly recommend out there, watch everyone out there watching this, make a list. Make a list that you can tick off with boxes of what makes a fact for you. And then apply it across the board to everything that you encounter. Everything that you sense. You hear, smell, taste, feel. All those things. All your senses. And if it ticks all those boxes, then it's a fact. If you're missing a couple boxes, then it's not. It's a belief. It's an opinion. It's an assumption. It's a presumption. That's why sometimes I go so hard on people that uh, participate with belief systems such as religion and aliens and things like that and ghosts or demons or what have you, you know, supernatural type things. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying for me, they're not facts because I can't certify them. It's that simple. Next comment comes from J.W. Mills 3. And they say, how do I set up a private postmaster address for myself? And I responded back to them, and I said, before I answer your question, please syntax the following sentence. How do I set up a private postmaster address for myself? Of course, they didn't respond back. This is part of my vetting, fo uh, vetting process, folks. I invite people to come up to the carpet. And if they're not willing to come up, then... How are they ever going to develop the capacity to do so using correct sentence structure? It's hard enough as it is. So you got to be able to step up onto the carpet and hold a position. And I invite people to do that, such as J.W. Mills, and the majority of them shrink away from it. So to address what he's asking here, how do I set up a private postmaster address for myself? There really is no such thing as a private address, is there? Using fiction terms like private, even though PRI is no contract, means the same thing as PRE. There is no such thing as a private address. Because if you had a private address, you wouldn't be able to get any mail to that address. Because if you put the mail out there on a mailbox, it's the public can see it. Someone delivering the mail can see it. A letter carrier can see it. So it's not private. There is no such thing as a private postmaster address, which address, again, is no contract. It would be location. There is no such thing as a private location unless, I mean, in the postal system. Not to my knowledge, anyways. I mean, it can be private to the extent that it's not published on... It, well, actually, no, it's really not. You, your name and address, you can keep it private to a degree. And you can hope that people will honor that privacy, even though it's on the internet, connected to your name, so on and so forth. You would hope that people respect that confidentiality, even though it is in the public, so to speak. It's sort of a gray line there. But nothing, there is no such thing as private in the context that this individual is talking about. Not really. But that doesn't give anyone the authority to come to someone's home dom domicile without being invited. As it says in my domicile contract that I wrote a few years ago when the whole medical goofiness started happening, the price for coming on to this property uninvited could be your life. Next comment comes from Mac One Juno and they say, yes, thank you, David. Much of this life has been spent seeking knowledge as to what is this game of life really about? Decades on mind and spirit till I certified for myself by experience and knowing. Now I study the seemingly puny by comparison. 
Now I study the seemingly puny by comparison, yet of comparable importance in the now space for this vessel's safety. Correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. Oh, I think they're saying that they feel like the grammar technology correct sentence structure is puny. That's interesting. May the source be with you, David. Is that a Star Wars pun? In your new life adventure by the grace of your own creative volition. All right. I'm just going to honor that comment as is. Thank you very much for the kind words. And, uh, hey, I echo the sentiment. Let it go out there to uh, David, wherever he is. Next comment comes from Dylan's voice. And this continues the saga of the sun as a fact. And he says, thanks again. I'll have another think about the sentence. And yep, I think your 1200 for the time is probably simplest. And I wasn't trying to convolute. Just don't want to make a claim based on beliefs. I understand that and cognize that Dylan's voice. I appreciate that, uh, that your volition was not to convolute. Sometimes we, as men and women and thinkers, do convolute things unnecessarily, think them uh, too much about things. Now, that sounds kind of, uh, that sounds like a dichotomy, because how can you think about something too much? But the thing is, is a lot of times we, and, and especially logical-minded people such as myself, overthink things when the simplest solution is right in front of us. I do that too sometimes. I used to do it a lot, actually. But now I've trained myself to look for the simplest solution. If I can certify something and somebody else agrees with me, maybe three people agree with me, maybe four people, then I know I'm not, I'm not, you know, now I know there's an answer there. There's a conclusion to something. It's not up to, I mean, it's not my volition to make life any more difficult than it already is. Just trying to keep the claim to what I actually know, which is merely the sensation of heat on my skin. Cheers, man. Yes. And as I stated in the video, not this video, but the video that you originally started commenting on where I used the sun as an example, and the heat of the sun, and how it can be certified, that is what I myself know. You may know different. Next comment comes from Daryl Bennett, longtime viewer and member. While sailing from English babble to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, is there a level playing field? I did answer this comment, and what I said was, it's up to you, Daryl, as a claimant, as a live life claimant, as authority of your vessel, to provide that geometric level playing field wherever it is. It's up to you to do that as the authority. It's not up to anyone else. Now, whether anyone wants to participate with you on that geometric level playing field, that's up to them. But you can level the field wherever you are, whether you're in fiction or in fact. Okay? As long as you and the other contract party understand each other. There's no questions. Everybody's up front. Then you can make contract, and it's a geometric level field. The only time it's not is when someone's trying to screw you over. But again, it's up to you to be able to determine that. It's up to your knowledge, your knowledge level. And if you have the knowledge to use correct sentence structure, that's a very strict geometric level playing field, for sure. Not very many people want to step up there. And then he says, congratulations on the 1K. Oh, he's talking about TikTok. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and I appreciate everybody that came from YouTube and subscribed and followed my TikTok channel. I'm now over a 1,000 followers. I've done one live stream over there, which I've republished over here, and I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the video that Daryl's commenting on. It's the replay of the TikTok live stream. And uh, I'll be going live at different times whenever I can on TikTok. I think at one point I got like almost I got like almost 350 people like within two seconds. It was so weird. I'm still figuring that out. Thanks, Daryl. Next comment comes from Tragic Events, and they say, "The fact you believe this gibberish 
is just sad, but the fact you think you should be paid to spread your delusions is even worse. I sincerely hope you get done for fraud one day. Typical, typical of a nom de guerre, tragic events, can't even credential themselves, don't even have the guts to use their correct name. Basic Internet Troll comes on and uh, saying that I think I need to be paid to spread my delusions. That is not true. There are no charges or fees for what I do. Anyone who sends me a donation gift, that's totally their choice. All of my correct sentence structure knowledge is available for free on this YouTube channel, over 600 videos. But of course, this individual isn't going to know that. They just come here to do a hit and run. Done for fraud. Well, you, you can hope. It's good to have hope, right? But like for me, I hope that people get done for uh, pedophilia, rape, cold-blooded murder, you know, I hope people get done for doing those types of things. That's what I hope. But, I mean, to each their own. Tragic events. Thanks for the comment. Final comment comes from member Stuart Ship, And they say, transparency is key for parse, syntax, correct sentence structure. Great, well-rounded video. Thank you very much, Stuart Ship. Uh, if you're interested in learning this grammar, you can contact... Well, actually... I'll leave that to the end video piece. I'm not going to go through that whole rigmarole here. But I do encourage, especially the members who support me, which thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for you donating to this channel and helping to keep it afloat. Your donations do not go unnoticed. It goes right back into this stuff. Helps keep food on the table and a roof over the head. But again, there's no charges or fees, and it's not necessary to get this knowledge. You know, there is no charge necessary to get this knowledge. It's all on this YouTube channel. But there is a what you put in is what you get out type of uh, situation going on here. That's why I suggest people apply for the workshops, because they'll get the most out of those, actually. But I do encourage the members and everyone else on here, try using your correct name on this YouTube, on the internet. Try it once. It's a great exercise in humility and transparency. Because this individual is talking about transparency is key for par se. Um, maybe their name is Stuart. I don't know. It could be. But I don't think Stewardship is their correct name. So for the sake of transparency, perhaps Stewardship will share their correct name. Thank you for the comment and the membership. Thanks, everybody else, for everybody who commented. Again, you can learn this grammar by studying the over 600 videos on this channel. Or, if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that... Uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.